the opportunity and the great challenge of facing this uh, Clemson offense. They do a great job. We started uh, prep on them the last couple of days. They do an excellent job with their offense. They spread you out. They go fast. We've got a lot of good football players, and they got a lot of respect for what they do. So we're looking forward to the uh, opportunity. Questions? We'll start right here with Aaron. Okay, when do you think it clicked for Tim Williams this year? I mean, what has he added on the edge of your defense? Well, he's added speed, power, uh, acceleration. I don't know, really know when it clicked. I would say somewhere in fall camp. He started to pick things up on third down, kind of became a specialist, and a uh, very sharp kid that's picked it up as we've gone along. A lot of our calls and stuff are conducive for him to go fast, come off the edge, create havoc, and he's gotten better and better under uh, Coach Tosh's tutelage. He's done a great job getting better. Chris Walsh right here. Kirby, you've obviously been in this situation before. What's different about this championship game? Well, we've been in some different ones. You know, you've been in there with the LSU, kind of tight, bunched up, running at you. Texas was a little bit spread. You know, then Notre Dame spread it out some. These, these guys are probably the fastest tempo we've played in a championship game. So they create a lot of challenges for us because they've got a lot of formations, um, a lot of space plays, a lot of good skill players. So it creates kind of a new dynamic in this situation for us to be able to stop those guys. And what seems like a short week, is, I guess it's more than usual, but it's not as much as the last game was. So it's a really quick turnaround. Right back over here with John Zener. I know we ask a lot about your defensive front. Have you ever had a group that's kind of as deep and diverse as this? And I'm including some of the guys that maybe don't get a lot of attention to that way. So. Yeah, we, we've, ne we've never had one this, this deep. I mean, this group is uh, pretty deep. I mean, they, they can roll in and out and not drop off a lot. They take pride in that. There's not a lot of uh, selfishness with that group. They, they, <laughs> they, they challenge each other each day. They compete for play at time. And they do a great job of helping each other out and supporting each other, which I think is really important in the D-line. They're, they're a tight unit, kind of like that offensive line. Back over here with Chip. Hey, Coach, I'm just wondering from a preparation standpoint, Coach Saban was saying here you haven't given one less out of attention to getting preparation for this game than because of the George thing. Where is it, where is it, are you just losing sleep, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day? Uh, do you work on Georgia at all during this, this, all this preparation that's been going on here? It's tough to manage both, you know, but uh, I take pride in giving the same amount of time that I've always given to the Alabama players of game planning, uh, adjusting. But certainly when I would have been recruiting for Alabama on the phone or uh, internet or whatever, Twitter, I spend all that time on Georgia with the recruiting. I mean, at the end of the day, coach is still recruiting here for Alabama, just like I'm recruiting for uh, Georgia. So that time gets offset. But as far as the commitment to the players, it hadn't dropped any. If anything, I'm trying to make sure they know I'm giving them everything I got every day and a lot of energy out there. In the middle of Cecil? Coach Mark, there seems to be a lot of people who want to come. Sean Watson to whether it's Johnny Manziel or Nick Marshall or whoever. Do you make any comparisons like that, or is he sort of unique in what you have? To do? I would definitely say he's unique, and you you could go there a little bit. I mean, it's almost like a mixture of the three guys. With Nick Marshall is a perimeter runner. He Sean runs well in the perimeter. Johnny Manziel was a great athlete to create things in space. So does Deshaun Watson. And this guy runs more power run game, like you would say Cam Newton does. Obviously, he's not the same stature as Cam, but he runs some of the similar plays that Auburn ran with him. So the mixture of those three guys, he takes a little bit from each one because he can pass the ball. I, mean, I watched this kid all through high school. He is a phenomenal player, but more than that, he has the it factor, and they believe in him, and that's pretty important in that position. Far side of the room with John. You've been with Nick for a long time. Just how have you seen him evolve as a coach from when he got here initially to, to where he is now? Well, you know, he's always been demanding not only of the players but the coaches and the people in the organization. He doesn't miss anything. He's on top of everything. But if I had to say the biggest change I would see, it would be the, the psychology of the athlete. He spends more time on the message he's going to deliver to the people in the organization so that those people in the organization take that message to the players. And then his message to the players, just like today was a typical Monday, he delivered a great message to the team to get them in the right mindset for the game. And I think that's where he's at the cutting edge. He's always using analogies, using stories, trying to find something new so that it's fresh.
for the kids. They don't get the same message, and he's elite at that. Back out front here with Mark. In preparing for uh, Deshaun Watson, how some of the scout teams guys done, like Blake Barnett and these other guys? Done a great job. You know, uh, Jalen Hurst has been out there. He's done a great job. Uh, kid, we just got in here. So, you know, we got Blake and him, so we got two fresh guys to keep rolling in. But obviously they can't give the exact same picture, but they've done good so far. And uh, the biggest thing we can't simulate is the tempo. And the tempo is you know, what they try to use as their advantage. Going to the back with Matt. And actually I have a scout team question also. So yeah, going into a game against a dual threat quarterback, how helpful is that to have somebody like Blake Barnett now Jalen on the scout team? And just as you faced or played with Blake as a scout team quarterback during the course of your going against the first team defense, just what have you seen from him as he's going against the first team defense during the year? Uh, Blake's matured. Blake's gotten a lot tougher. You know, he came in. Those I said it at the last ball game. Those D linemen have been hard on Blake. They beat him up a little bit, roughed him up, and even though he's got a black jersey on, he gets popped some. Same way we've been doing with uh, Jalen. We're telling those guys that, hey, you're, you're live. Just because you got a black person, you're going to get hit. And you need to get hit. So it, it makes them better, but it makes us practice tackling a quarterback, which is not always natural. We don't get to hit quarterbacks all the time. So both those guys have done an excellent job. They're good leaders as well as David Cornwall. He's a little different dynamic, but we roll those three guys in there. It's kind of a luxury to have those three guys working on Clemson's offense for us. Back out front with Dwayne. Coach, you obviously coach some great defenses. So, in terms of this group, how similar they are in terms of mentality and how they go about the game? Similar to each other, or no, similar to other defenses? Bad defense today. Yeah, this this one's most unique I've had. I mean, I'm not saying it's the most talented or the most productive. It certainly is close, but this group is unique because they love each other so much. They're so competitive. They get along so well. There's really no bad apples in the bunch. And they're fun to coach. They, they really do. And, and the personality is generated through the D-line. It's, it's crazy to me how many times Jaron or Ashawn or Jonathan Allen go tackle a guy at practice. And they just they want to go lie. They want to go hit people. And I'm like, whoa, slow down, boy. I mean, you you, you, you got to almost hold them back because you worry about them injuring a scout team player or injuring themselves. But they don't, they're not worried about that. They're thinking about we need to go play good, so we need to practice good. And when they set that tempo, they turn around the linebackers and they jump them. They jump on the DBs and they're not thudding guys. So the, the demand is there, and when you got that as a coach, step back and let them go. Right here with Ken. There's tons of guys I could ask about, but the second half of the season, Reuben Foster, let's talk about his development and, and what's that done for the other guys. You know, Reuben will always hold a special place in my heart because what all he's been through as a child and, uh, and done a great job developing in the recruiting process. I've known the kid since he was in ninth grade. Um, but the, the last year, I mean, he came in as a raw, talented guy, a little undisciplined, kind of ran around, just made plays. And now he's playing with more discipline, better eye control. He's fitting things better. He takes pride in his performance like a pro guy. He's like, I know i got to play better, Coach. So, and every week he wants to learn. He wants you to teach him. And when you got a guy that's really talented and he's coachable, it's kind of why we do this as coaches, because you get to enjoy being around a kid that's grown up a lot in the last three years. So I've enjoyed coaching. Last two quick ones, Alex and then Mark. Given the Sean Watson's athleticism, how much are you going to rely on the second level, the linebackers, especially outside of Dillon, Denzel, uh, to stay home a lot and kind of make sure he has to get outside? Yeah, he, he's tough to, I mean, you got two choices. I mean, you can come after the guy and try to keep him in the pen. You can sit back and try to have somebody spy him. Well, now you can stand there and throw the ball in the pocket. I mean, it's tough to defend the dual threat quarterback. He extends plays. A lot of their biggest plays are broken down plays. And uh, he does a great job of that. I mean, I can't sit there and tell you it's going to be one way or the other. I mean, we've got to come up with a good plan, mix it up, and not, not let him get comfortable is the big key. Cecil, quick. Uh, thank you, Josh. I just wanted to follow up. I gave a mic too quickly. Um, you talked about watching Deshaun in high school. I've uh, seen a lot of it. What was your evaluation of him at, at that time? What was your recommendation to, to him? Oh, we, we, we wanted him. We, we wanted him bad. I mean, we thought he was a really great quarterback. I, I can't remember who the offensive coordinator was when he was coming out. I think we were in a changeover somewhere. There may be McElwain and us. I'm not sure what it was, but we offered him and thought a lot of him, thought very highly of him. And, and if, hypothetically, you'd been head coach at Georgia at that time, how, how hard do you go after him? 
I think you always try to go after in-state kids that are that talented. He's certainly a talented <coughs> player. He's a guy that is a difference maker and uh, made a difference in the Clemson's program for sure. Last one right there. Mark. Uh, Dylan Lee obviously had a gigantic game uh, last weekend, uh, and he um, seems like one of those guys who some games he plays a ton, some games not as much. I was wondering if you could talk a little about uh, the way he kind of, um, you know, what dictates how much he plays kind of as a representative for the larger way you do your defense, which is some guys play more or less depending on the opponent of the series in the situation. You said Dylan, is that what you said? Dylan Lee? Yeah. 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 Dylan plays based on the personnel grouping the team gives us. So obviously big physical running teams, he's a big physical guy. He plays more often than that. In our sub-defense, nickel dime package, he's a backup player that plays behind uh, Reggie a lot of times. So he doesn't play as often. Um, but he's grown as a player. He's really smart. He's one of the few players on our team that can play two positions. He's playing outside backer, inside backer. That's really a tough deal. There's one week he's all outside. Then the next week where the other kids have been all inside, he jumps back in with the inside and has to catch back up. So it shows his ability to learn and, and grow as a player. And he's done a great job, and he gives maximum effort every day. Thanks, Kirby. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kirby.